Hello and welcome to the Kylie Koo Studio. This is October week three in the Mixed Media Emporium Facebook group and we're continuing with Around the Home and Garden as a prompt. Now, I've actually changed the project that I intended to do this week uh, and what I've decided to do, it's kind of a bit, bit of a last minute project, but what I've decided to do is what I'm calling Positive Mood Cards. I've pulled a few things out that I might use today in this project and I've also got some other things sitting around that kind of sit on my work table or close to my work table a lot of the time. Uh, so this bowl has a lot of little interesting things in it that I like to, to use a lot. But I've looked out a cereal box here from around the home so that's a possibility. I've got an old piece of packaging here uh, I think that was something I got a couple of Christmases ago and I've just decanted what was in it, so that's a possibility. And both of those could be used uh, to make cards. I've got my little art journal there. I did think that the pages could be done in something like that. I've got the gel prints. I might use them. And I've got a whole series of magazines. Now, I think last year... I bought more magazines than I've ever bought before. I think that was just the way that year was. But I do have magazines here from several years ago. Beautiful images in them. I'm always a bit loath to use them, but I've decided no, now is the time. I get a lot of enjoyment from some of those, but you know, a lot of the time they're just sitting doing nothing. So, as I say, I'm going to do positive mood cards. I'm going to use some of the little cards that I gel printed on a couple of weeks ago and you know in my bowl here I've got the scroll that I made a few weeks ago and this would be a way to do some kind of positivity things you know to stick nice things onto a scroll use it as a wall hanging or roll it up. I've got my journal jar so again mini scrolls within there and this project could be done as mini scrolls and rolled up and put into that kind of positivity jar. But anyway, let's get started and I'll show you how I'm going to approach it today. So let's whiz through this bit. I've got my cup of coffee and I am just going to sit and go through some of these magazines and I'm going to pull out images that feel positive to me or if I see some words that I might use then I'm going to do likewise. So I'll just pull the page out with the words or with the image on it. For example I like that cup of coffee in the middle there. That's something that uh, makes me happy to look at. I like coffee so really I guess today I had thought about also making a mood board, but sometimes I feel with a mood board that you're kind of looking for things that might coordinate. And the way my mind sometimes works, the way my art works, things aren't always coordinated. So that's why I've decided to make individual mood cards, all coming from a kind of place of positivity. And I'm seeing some other images in here that I don't want to pull out today, but I may well come back to using at another time. And, you know, sometimes these magazines feel so precious because the images are beautiful and you think, well, I don't want to spoil the magazine, but if they're sitting around doing nothing, then what's the point? So next, I'm just going to tear those images down. I go through another couple of magazines off camera, but next I'm just going to tear these down to a more manageable size. Now, I have a tendency when I make cards, and I've made loads of cards over the years, including my positivity deck. I've got a tendency to make them all the same size. But I decided today that since the images are different sizes, then why not kind of break the mould and go for different sizes of cards? So these were all A6 size that I made before. And I'm just going to look at, you know, how I might fit these images on and maybe just where some of the cards have some colour or some pattern pattern on it. I'm just going to try and match them up with my images. Now I'm not sure what Nina is going to do for definite this week but unusually we happened to mention to each other what our plans had been for this week and we were both doing the same 
thing and that's absolutely fine. But last minute I decided, well, just to bring you a bit of variety in case she's still going ahead with her project of that sort, then I would start something different. And uh, I've got the footage of the other one and I'll bring that to you at some point in the future. So all I'm going to do at this stage is to use a glue stick and start laying these images down. So this one is a bit bigger than the card and I'm just going to look at where I might position it, what part of the image I want to, to retain. Just straightening it up because I don't want the image to be squint on it. Then if I'd had my bone folder to hand I would have used it but instead I'm just using an old palette knife just to scrape it on the back to get the magazine image down uh, and secured to that card as far as possible. Bit of an abstract image there, really like that, love the colours of it. Uh, thinking about do I want to keep the card that size or will I uh, you know and just decorate the white part of it but you know, for the time being, just getting everything glued down. Now, I got this little guillotine trimmer from Aldi a couple of years ago and it's really handy for cards this size. I've noticed sometimes that with a paper trimmer it can rip the paper on top especially if it's been put down with a glue stick and it's maybe not quite dry yet. So all I'm trying to do is to make sure that I've got the cards as a kind of rectangle so that the, they are squared on, on the corners and just taking off any excess. See there it just needed to snip that edge just a little bit. As I say, it's a really handy little guillotine. And that's almost a kind of postcard size. This one, just going to make more the kind of square. It's not quite a square, but just taking off those little white edges. And basically I do that with all the cards. I'm now going to round the corners. I just like corners to be rounded on things so just going to do that. Need to snip some of the edges a little bit. I did damage that uh, corner tool a while back by trying to do something too thick on it. So I do want to make the images my own and I'm just simply going to add a bit of stenciling. So I'll put the paints onto my little gel plate and then of course afterwards I can use what's ever on there. And just looking for some colours that might go with the image of the fish. So I notice that there's uh, orange and kind of yellow within there and it was the fluorescent paints that came to hand, Pabio fluorescence. So I will put a note of the paints and the stencils that I'm using in the description box below. And of course the base for these is the cartridge paper that I used a couple of weeks ago. And the various things that I referred to at the beginning that I've made in recent weeks, I'll also put links to the videos above and indeed in the description box below. So just using a few different stencils here, I only pulled out maybe four and this is one of my favourite ones. It came from Snipart, or it's made by Snipart, and I got it via Craftbox UK. And this is one of my absolute favourite stencils. And you know, there's nothing wrong with using one thing over and over again. So I applied the orange to that one because there was some little orange bits in amongst the plants. I'm going to use this one again, this stencil again, this kind of mandala stencil on that abstract card, but this time I'm going to change the paint to white. I like to use an actual stencil brush, so I do have them in different sizes, but just cleaning that off in between. But if any of the colour transfers, that really doesn't worry me too much. And I think the white here is nice and crisp against that blue and white background. So love the image here, just thinking about how can I change this up and I'm thinking about just using the centre of that stencil and creating 
a moon, a nice big glowing moon in the sky. So again, just using the white paint there. A couple of little bits have come off round the edge, so just going to gently wipe those away, not rubbing too hard because I might lift the magazine image or the colour out of the image. Love the way this one's looking. Did wonder if I should just leave it, but again, just want to add a little something to it. And I'm looking here at gold and also bronze, and go with the bronze because I think that'll stand out just a little bit more against the background. Again, this particular stencil, I think it came from Craftbox UK in a subscription box that I bought, or at least a one-off. I, I bought a few boxes from them. Uh, it wasn't actually on subscription, I just would buy them every so often. And again, this is one that I've used quite a bit. Just want to put a little bit on the other side there, just to balance it up a little. And I think that just adds a certain something to it. But of course, you know, you could make these and not add anything to the cards at all. Wondering about the coffee cup and, and what I do with that one. And again, I just take the dots and do the dot stencil and do a few of the gold on that. I thought the gold went, or sorry, the bronze, I thought it went with the colour of the coffee. Now, you know, these cards could be used in different ways. They could just be, they could just sit out on a work table. They could be held in a box and you just pull one out every so often. Or indeed, they could be put into journals. They could even be used as journal cards. I just wanted today to use some nice image and associate it to nice positive things. So using a bit of turquoise here, just a hobby craft. Uh, craft paint in turquoise, adding a little bit of white, just tinting it a little bit with the white and just adding a little bit at the bottom of that, nothing too much at all. And I'm going to give them a good dry. Now I did start a second project to show you, but I used some PVA glue that got very thick and for that reason I haven't finished it because it wasn't dry, but I'll finish that at some point soon and we'll upload that video. And that was also using the gel prints I did recently. So just going to take my Sharpie pen here. I just felt that a few dots to represent stars in the sky would just add to that. I'd also gone around that first card and, and I'm doing so with the rest, just with a stays on black ink, not looking to make it too thick. Now I was going to cut out words from my magazine pages but instead I decided to use up these Tim Holtz chit chat stickers. So once I'd identified them, I did change some of them about a few times, that's why I'm now just pushing them right down. So I've added some words to it. And then when I see the stars that I've added to the one with the moon, I decide I want to do a little bit of dots on the others, just mainly some kind of random dots. I just like dotting things. I had the pen out and thought, well, again, it adds just a little bit to this. So as I say, these cards could be used in so many different ways, just with some nice positive words, positive images to be added to journals or to just be on their own. Now, of course, Nina will have a video this week and I'll leave a link to her video below and I'll also leave a link to the Mixed Media Emporium Facebook group. And if you do decide to join the group, please be aware that there are some questions that you have to answer to get into the group. If you don't answer the questions, unfortunately, it uh, your request to join is just automatically declined. So please do look out for the questions. 
So, just about coming to the end of this. It seemed like a quick project. I probably worked on it for about an hour or so, so it's not too long. Some have uh, paint on the back, others don't, but I may come back and add some more to them, or I might actually journal on the back. So, a nice, quick and easy project and a good way to use up those precious magazine images. So thanks so much for watching. Do take care. Bye for now.